The time has finally come. I have done rankings of all the suits in every single Batman Arkham game, from Origins to Arkham Knight. I even ranked the Batmobiles in Arkham Knight, okay? And I've been putting off this moment for so long. I've been putting off the chance to sit down with you guys and give you my tier list, my ranking of the actual Batman Arkham games. And that's what we're gonna be doing today, okay? We got the tier list up here. I know there's some games missing, but let's be honest, you guys didn't know that there were mobile games out there for Batman. Batman Arkham, so, you know, Batman Arkham City Mobile, Batman Arkham Origins Mobile, and then as well, Batman Arkham Underworld. Those are all gonna go under the, be honest, you had no idea these games existed tier. And I know I also don't have the remasters down there, but we're gonna talk about that, okay? I got some hot takes for you guys here in this video. Let's start things off with Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate. This is the handheld version of Batman Arkham Origins that was supposed to be available on the PS Vita and the Nintendo 3DS. I was never feeling it. It just wasn't my cup of tea. It was a very clunky game, and so it's really, it's gonna go down there into the D tier. It's not F tier because, well, I still had a tiny bit of fun with it. And I don't know, I have a soft spot for Vita games or just PSP stuff in general. That was such a relic of the past. I hope one day we do see a PSP revival from PlayStation because I had so much fun with that. And I already know that some people are going to disagree with me on this one. And well, if you disagree, scroll down and hit the thumbs up button. And well, if we're on the topic of Batman Arkham Origins, let's talk about the actual game itself. Not the handheld version, but Batman Arkham Origins that released on the PS3, the 360 and PC. I feel like I have said so much about this game already. I feel like the entire Batman Arkham community, the entire video game community has said the same thing over and over and over again. Batman Arkham Origins is criminally underrated. It's got such a cool premise. You know, all these assassins are trying to chase down, hunt down the Batman. It takes place during Christmas. Yeah, it's got a bit of an empty open world. Yeah, the traversal getting from point A to point B takes quite a bit of time and forces you to kind of use the fast travel, but it's also got incredible boss fights, some really good writing. I'd even argue the best writing in the franchise. And although it comes off the heels of a really weird twist where Black Mask ends up being the Joker, we still get to see the origin of the relationship between Batman and Joker and the way it showcases how the two of them need each other. Going through the Joker's origin, where you even get to play as him when he's Red Hood, seeing his interactions with Harley and Quinzel and watching her transition into the Harley Quinn that we know, and then also a top-notch performance from Roger Craig Smith, who did such a good job at portraying a younger Kevin Conroy, a more inexperienced Batman. I think Troy Baker did a good job as the Joker as well. I just wish he did something other than doing a Mark Hamill impression. Plus, I can't be the only one here who put in a ton of hours into Arkham Origins multiplayer. That was such a fun mode, way ahead of its time. I seriously wish there was some sort of revival for that multiplayer mode because, man, it was a blast. A rocky launch and some plot holes that are inconsistent with the canon of the Arkham universe held this game back so much, but it's gained quite the cult following ever since then. So Batman Arkham Origins, for me, that's in the A tier. Then we have Batman Arkham VR, and I gotta be honest with you, okay? There's some more in this game than I would have expected, at least in terms of story. Rocksteady did a pretty good job tying this together with Batman Arkham Knight. This is supposed to be for Batman the first time he experiences the effects of Joker's blood in his system. And that's pretty cool. It's honestly a bold move from Rocksteady to do something like that. They could have taken the lazy route with an Arkham VR, but they instead wanted to give us quite a story here. The unfortunate reality though, is that Batman Arkham VR is kind of a glorified tech demo. It's very short. It clocks in at like two hours, I think, and then that's it, you're done. Which maybe isn't so bad for a VR game, but at the end of the day, you're forking over a couple hundred bucks for the actual PlayStation VR, and then you have to buy the game separately. So all that for a two hour experience doesn't sound super worth it. But if one of your friends or family members has a VR system, I'd highly recommend going over to their house and trying this game out because it is very fun and you'll really enjoy what you get to experience there. For that reason, I'm gonna put it in the B tier. And now we got the Rocksteady trilogy, okay? People consider this the greatest gaming trilogy of all time. So many people consider either of these games to be some of the greatest superhero games ever made. And those aren't really false statements. I know a lot of you guys here found this channel either from Batman Arkham Origins way back in the day, or of course, Batman Arkham Knight. This franchise in general, it means a lot to me, but we can't talk about the main games before we talk about the Batman Arkham collection, which got a Batman Arkham Asylum 
remaster and an Arkham City remaster. Now I'm gonna be real, okay? When you're free roaming in the open world in those games, especially in Arkham Asylum, even though that's a small open world, it's not really an open world, it's quite the visual upgrade, all right? The environments, the lightning, the rain, all that stuff is great. But man, those cutscenes and some of those character models, it really feels like they missed the mark. You can't really complain from the story standpoint or the gameplay because, well, that's all the same, but this wasn't the true remaster that I feel everyone was hoping for. And at the end of the day, there's a novelty in playing the original versions of these games. You're not jumping back and saying, oh man, I hate that they aren't graphical masterpieces. You want to play them for their story. You want to play them for the gameplay. So please hate me all you want. Okay. Disagree with me all you want, but the remasters, the Batman Arkham collection, that's going in, please, dear God, no. But now let's talk about Batman Arkham Asylum. I'll never forget when I was like 12, 13 years old when this game first came out, I was begging my older brother to get it for me. I just had my wisdom teeth removed. So I'm sitting there muffling my voice, trying to explain to him the game that I want. And well, one day I walk into my room and there the game is waiting for me to play. And that was when I first experienced greatness. Arkham Asylum changed everything for superhero video games. It changed everything for video games. The combat completely revolutionized the way we look at combat. And it all started because at one point, Batman Arkham Asylum was like a rhythm based game, you know, ping ponging between enemies, not to mention how atmospheric it is. You know, there's even horror elements, all the scarecrow stuff in Arkham Asylum is just brilliant. Having the entire voice cast return from the original Batman animated series was such a good call from Rocksteady. Everything about this game, except for the final boss battle, I really, really love. It felt like towards the end of the game, Rocksteady was like, well, we gotta have some big fight between Batman and the Joker, and we know that Batman can completely wipe the floor with just a normal Joker, so give him the Titan formula. That just didn't work for me. You know, seeing a giant Joker that we have to fight was a little weird. And the only other thing that I found a bit odd in Batman Arkham Asylum was the way that they treated Bane. I do not like Bane being just a giant brute, you know, just some big dumb idiot. Arkham Origins tries to salvage it a little bit and explain why Bane's a big dumb idiot, but that wasn't always what they were going for when they first introduced the character in Arkham Asylum. It's part of why I love Arkham Origins as well, because they gave us a proper Bane in that game. So because of that, those two things, those minor little nitpicks, it holds the game back from being that perfect S tier. And that's why I'm going to have to put Arkham Asylum in the A tier. And actually, you might hate me for this. I'm putting it below Arkham Origins. And then there's Batman Arkham City. You know, after having experienced Arkham Asylum as a younger kid, I could not be more hyped that they were doing a follow up so soon. I was so hyped for the premise and as well, the expansion on the rogues gallery. You know, Mr. Freeze was joining this game. That was something that got me hyped. We had Ra's al Ghul in the League of Assassins too. There was so much to look forward to in Batman Arkham City. And man, did Rocksteady deliver on all fronts. They over delivered. The writing is impeccable. The open world was expanded upon. We actually had an open world to free roam around this time. Traversal got a bit of an update. The combat got quite an upgrade as well. We got new gadgets. There was so much in this game. This was everything that you want in a sequel. Upping the ante in every single aspect. Batman Arkham City is a perfect game. I can just sit here and praise it all live long day. I can make an entire two hour essay just talking about every aspect I love about Batman Arkham City and how much this game means to me. It's an anomaly. I don't know if we're ever going to get a product that's of the same quality as Batman Arkham City ever again. Not that you even had to have a doubt before I even started this video, but Batman Arkham City is an S tier and it's at the top of the S tier and it will not be top. It's my personal favorite video game of all time. We were all expecting that Rocksteady was going to blow the roof off the place with their next Arkham franchise installment and that's when they unveiled Batman Arkham Knight to the world. And it's been quite some time since Arkham Knight has come and gone. Again, I know a lot of you have subscribed to this channel since the Arkham Knight days back in 2014, 2015. And I know so many people have certain complaints about it regarding the Batmobile and as well the identity of the Arkham Knight. The Batmobile is a tough one for me because as somebody who loved to play shooter games, I had so much fun with the Batmobile and the tank sections. Matter of fact, that actually feels like a proof of 
concept for what they're trying to do with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, but don't tell anybody I told you that. Plus just the raw power of the Batmobile roaring through the streets of Gotham. Graphically, this still holds up to some of the games that are coming out today. The open world was so much fun to explore, and there was also tons of side content to dig your teeth into as well. The Arkham Knight situation is such a tough one, and I've explained this in previous videos, but again, to reiterate, they could have just made him Red Hood. They didn't need to go ahead and make a new character, call him the Arkham Knight, and advertise that it was a brand new character. But if they just made the Arkham Knight Red Hood, you could just Google who is Red Hood, find out the entire story about Jason Todd, and spoil the entire game for yourself. Obviously, for lore nuts like you and I, people who live and breathe Batman everything, we knew pretty much right away that the Arkham Knight was going to be Jason Todd. But for the casual fan, for the casual person out there who doesn't know, it was the surprise that they wanted to preserve for those people. And whether you like it or not, those are the types of fans that make up a majority of sales for these games. So that's why the Arkham Knight stuff did work for me pretty well. But that's not to say that I don't have my grievances with Batman Arkham Knight. I agree with the entire community and what they say unanimously. The boss battles in this game are very mediocre. A lot of them amount to just tank battles, especially the side mission against Deathstroke. What were they thinking? But you'd think at least if the Arkham Knight is Jason Todd, if that's the big buildup, the big climax of this game, that they would have something special in terms of a boss fight against him. But for it to be this overwhelming stealth mission where you got to get under his perch a couple of times, have a cutscene initiate, and that's it, it was very disappointing. And this was one of the first games when I was younger that I made sure sure to 100% so that I can see the real ending. And I think as a send-off to the Arkham franchise, which we kind of now know isn't really a send-off to the Arkham franchise, Rocksteady did a great job. They closed a chapter, an incredible trilogy of Batman games that changed everything in the video games industry. There are quite a few missteps in Batman Arkham Knight. It's nowhere near the perfection that I think Arkham City is, but I also don't think it's as bad as a lot of the internet does. But that doesn't mean that they completely missed the mark. I think they landed on their two feet with Batman Arkham Knight. They ended their trilogy very satisfyingly, in my personal opinion. I love this game to pieces. I still jump back to it from time to time, and I'm still awe-inspired by the way that it looks better than games that are coming out in 2023. So Batman Arkham Knight, for me, is all the way at the tippy top of the A tier. And that'll round out my tier list for the Batman Arkham games. But hey, sound off with your thoughts in the comments section below. My list is not definitive. What would you rank the Batman Arkham games? I've been Caboose, and I'll see you guys later.